Show me, what's your real name? It is now. <laughs> it wasn't when I was born. I was born Joseph Levitch, L-E-V-I-T-C-H. And I have some other bits of information that'll choke you up. <laughs> I'm sure you're not about to come back with why did you change it? About <laughs> those times. <laughs> when? Yes, sir. Did you raise your hand or no? Yes, speak. Anybody, uh, please. I yes, sir. Yes, right. Wonderful. <laughs> Funny bloke, make a lot of people laugh, probably, and all this. But are you a happy bloke as well? <laughs> um, that's a very good question, and uh, I left myself open for it because I did say you can ask me anything. I, I don't know that I am happy in the literal sense of the word. I think I am. Uh, I don't think that I know what complete happiness is because if I did, I wouldn't have to come here tonight hoping you would all like me. The day I don't have to do this, I guess that's happiness, but that's also loneliness. Yes, sir. Ma'am, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes? I beg your pardon? Do you think happiness has to do with being white? I really don't know. I don't think I'm qualified to answer that. I think happiness is uh, today, this moment. I don't know that we can apply this moment of happiness to 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. I don't really know what the answer is. I think you have to find your happiness, and I don't think there's such a thing as a pattern. Well, now we have found it. Let's follow that, because that's secure happiness for the rest of our lives. <coughs> well, that's wrong, because there's a lot of people on the perimeter that, not are, that are not about to allow us to formulate a pattern of happiness. They're going to screw us up somewhere. You know, Ho Chi Minh, the UN, all those cats. They don't want you to find a... That's it. It spoils. There's an imbalance that way. The way they got it now is marvelous, where we can all just shake a little. What's happening next? <laughs> I really don't know. I have to... Even if I had the answer in terms of myself, it wouldn't relate to you. You would have to find your own. And I'm sure you will. <laughs> okay. When you're directing, do you find it hard to be critical of your own performance? No, I don't find it difficult at all. I find that I was fortunate <coughs> in that... Objectivity is the secret. I didn't know that I had it. I think a man finds that out once he gets started. Yeah, but surely if you're too objective, you won't be in when you're playing the part. You won't play it spontaneously enough when you're doing takes and things. I'm never objective when I'm performing. I'm only... That means you have a very sudden switch, doesn't it? Because if you're directing, you're trying to line things up, all right? And then when you get ready to do a take, and you've got to go and change into the part, then you find that sometimes a little difficult. No, I find that very rewarding and very satisfying. Because when the, when the conversion takes place, the, the job, the role of the director, as you know, is a very, very responsible one and a very trying one, a very difficult job. It's uh, rougher than anyone can imagine because you have the weight of the world on your shoulders. Moreover, you have a couple of dozen actors that need you as Papa and Mama and kiss them and hug them and breastfeed them and everything else, and it's very trying. Now, when I have the opportunity to go from behind that camera, carrying the responsibilities, the obligations, the commitments, the integrity and everything else involved. It's so wonderful to get in front of the camera because nobody bothers you. Because you, <laughs> who's going to annoy him? <laughs> uh, it's such a relief to be able to do that that that's the only concentration that I have at that time. But I take a great deal of time before I make that move to be sure that everything is technically locked and everything is secure on this side before I make the conversion. Then the objectivity takes place in the cutting room. If he's not funny, I cut him out. If he's funny, I yes, laugh. I mean, how can you, when you're actually <clears throat> doing a take, ever tell whether your performance is what you wanted? Because nobody knows better than the performer. If you are... The character came to me uh, easily because I think it was myself. And uh, there's nothing easier than playing yourself or an extension of myself. But it isn't something that I could honestly stand here and submit to you that I created and said, aha, this will be the device. The device was there and told me that was it. Yeah, but I think you know, there are some characters which might become funny because in a certain extent they might be in a relation of superiority with the other. As well as I understand your character as in a certain way being in a sort of inferiority in relation to the other. And so basically, I regard your character as someone who is a little shy who is basically good but is perhaps simple or or... <laughs> I understood you up until the time you said... 
I think I know what you mean uh, at the beginning. The middle, you lost me, and at the end, I got all mixed up altogether. <laughs> Uh, if you are asking me to identify the character, if you're asking me, is the character this subservient character or uh, subordinate to the needs of others, etc., he is the underdog, if that's the word that might sum up all of what you said. He has to be, because he understands that and it's real. And uh, for the same reason that we don't throw a snowball at a gray felt hat and we always throw it at a black top hat. That's the purpose in approaching the characters we do. He has to be that way, because he's everybody. And the heavy in the piece, who is usually the bank president that won't give your mother the mortgage again on the house, there are only a few of them, and we're not playing to them. Moreover, we need that few of them for people to understand that's who we're knocking. And in comedy, you must have a menacing factor.